Good morning from the Flanagan Homestead. This is June 22nd. Uh, I'm early in the morning. I've got the quad and spreader on the truck, but that's not what I'm starting off the day with. I also have my backpacks blower there. I'm heading out to the tree farm to spray for aphids today. Uh, that's our first goal. We're, we try to do this early in the morning when it's cool and there's not much breeze because you don't want your chemical drifting off into space. So um, heading to the, I'm going to go drop off the uh, quad and spreader at the church because uh, after I'm done with the blowing of the for aphids, I'm going to go fertilize the sports field that we put in. First tank full of the day going in. We're off to a little bit slow start. I had to go and buy some safety equipment at par that we lost. We had to round up some more uh, rain gear to cover myself. Uh, the boys took mine, so Barry found some of his, and uh, we're getting ready to go. This goes a lot faster. Uh, I do the work in the field. And I carry the backpack and spray it, but uh, I've done this by myself and mixed it and uh, sprayed it. And it takes about twice as much time as when uh, Barry's just here. He has the next bucket mixed up and ready to go. So as soon as I get done with that one, I drop the pack for just a second, take a break. He pours it in, helps me get it back on because these packs aren't light anyway. And with three gallons of uh, chemical in it, they're really heavy. So it's nice to have a second person mixing and we can, we'll probably finish the entire farm in about two hours. Might I add that Rob's also great at doing this because he gets a workout. This is his personal workout. He loves starting the spring off with running through the Christmas tree farm with, with the chemical on his back. I love it. I don't have to do any of that hard work. <laughs> this is true. I will lose a lot of water and sweat today. Uh, one of the nice things is we have a better kill on the weeds and this year we're not just spraying the rows we're spraying the whole thing so in years past I've been uh, tripping over weeds that are out in the rows sometimes but this time it's going to be easy to walk through so anyway uh, with this backpack blower we're going to get up close and just blow it directly right into the trees first load done uh, getting as slow a start as we did today it's uh, the breeze is starting to pick up a little bit and so I'm gonna need to be spraying just going one direction it's not windy and it's not gonna take it across the countryside but uh, with the mist blowing up in the air if I'm walking this direction it's coming back at me so I'm gonna try to do most of my spraying going that way which is gonna add a little effort to this but uh, it is what it is. All right, so I am staring into the sun here, but uh, uh, we're on a couple buckets, uh, berries, uh, a couple bucket fulls down, a couple backpack sprayers full. Uh, berries filling it up now. So, uh, just in case you're wondering, we're using Ultor. The reason we like Ultor is it's systemic. It'll treat root, root aphids as well as the aphids up on the foliage. It gets absorbed into the branches and will fight off aphids on either side. We typically do, uh, it says 10 to 12 ounces per acre. Uh, we've done the calibration, figured it out with the buckets. Uh, it takes, we put about three ounces per tank full and then it sprays. So uh, it works really well for us. And uh, by the way, congratulations to Barry. He retired this week from 36 years of teaching. And so he is now a fisherman and a tree farmer. Uh, that's, that's about the gist of it. Uh, I, kind of a tree farmer. I'm the tree farmer. <laughs> it's hard to get good help these days. No, but I'm if you haven't neighbor. followed our story, uh, you know, Barry and I met teaching over 20 years ago. And I had had experience helping my grandpa on his farm and grown small scale on my property, but I didn't have enough property to go and had successful good trees, but didn't have property. And Barry's like, I like to work and I have property. 
And I said, well, I don't have property, but I have knowledge. And so here we are about 20 years later, it's worked out great. Okay, this is one of those things that I've often worried about being a small farmer. So if you're using one piece of equipment, you have one of a piece of equipment, and it breaks down on you, what are you going to do? Right now, our pull cord doesn't catch anything. So we're going to get Barry's running, coming back with some tools. We're going to try to pull it apart and uh, get it going. If we can't get this going, that's it for the day. So as I said, that's one of the things I've worried about is we have one backpack blower and it's basically run for us for 15 years. And it was funny because just this morning I was thinking about what if this breaks down in the field? It has, it's never done it on us, but uh, then we can't go because we've got one piece of equipment. But uh, we're gonna try to get it going. And if not, we'll take it to the shop or take it home, try to work it out some more and come back another day. Unfortunately, we're full of chemical right now. So if we don't get it going, we gotta pour this out, store it somewhere. Uh, but uh, if we, before we try to start it up again, I'm gonna fill it up with gas. And uh, if we do get it started, I won't shut it off between loads. We'll just, no breaks in between, no more video. <laughs> We're just gonna roll it if we get it going again. That's just life on a small farm. Okay, here's a little update on what happened. Uh, our pull cord is just fine, but the gears in here, they're supposed to grip, something broke. We're not exactly sure. We've been trying to visualize what that is, but uh, we could not get it to catch. It was, just, it was just spinning inside here. But we found that if we shifted this over just a little bit, it caught enough that we could start it. So we got it started, and then we did, did the rest of the field without uh, stopping it, just left it idling in between every load. Uh, I do want to, I've shut it down, we started cleaning it up, but I like to rinse it out by putting water in there and blowing out. So we're going to go ahead and try to start it again and you'll see what we did. So I, I just held this on, pressed to the side, and hopefully we could do her again. Yep. Oops. Stopped at my favorite store in town, Woodland Saw and Cycle. They had the part that uh, we needed that was stripped out so that we couldn't, uh, so that it was just slipping when we pulled the crank. And three dollars and seventy-eight cents, good as new.
All right, so we're done. Uh, it was about two hours. We went, uh, might have ended up going a little bit quicker overall time today because we had the breakdown. Not because we had the breakdown, but because we'd, we couldn't take time to stop. We had to keep the motor running. So uh, I didn't have my little minor brakes in between each time I filled up. So uh, we kept it going, but uh, everything's done. Uh, in recap, we we're doing Ultor at 12 to 10 to 12 ounces per acre, which for us, well, I got a sweaty shirt. This is not a super dark blue shirt. This is this is all sweat. But anyway, uh, 10 to 12 ounces per acre. We've been using Old Tor for a number of years. Actually, that's I think the only uh, aphid killer that we've been using. We were going to change this year to something different. This is systemic, so it treats roof root aphids as well as foliar. Uh, so that's a nice thing about it, but. Uh, we were going to change just so that the aphids don't build up a tolerance, but uh, we had Ultor left, so we wanted to use that up. And next year we'll probably use something that's more of a contact killer, spray and kill the aphids that are on the tree. But uh, so in our tank, that was uh, three, about three ounces per tank full at the rate that I'm spraying. And it took us a couple hours, and we did have a field breakdown. That reminds me of a story when uh, my father-in-law. Uh, does potatoes or used to do potatoes hundreds of acres of potatoes every year now he does a thousand of alfalfa but uh, the bulker which is the uh, the tractor that comes through and pulls uh, the digger uh, a bit huge tractor pulls the bulker through the field dragging it through the field lifting up the potatoes sorting out the dirt and the potatoes go down there so this is a monster tractor wheel about six feet high and we were out there I was helping harvest potatoes one day and uh, the axle brakes, the six foot wheel stalls me, falls to the ground, the tractor down to the ground. And I, not being a mechanic or a welder, I'm like, we're done. There's no potatoes this year. But, uh, you know, my father-in-law has been running his farm for 15 years, ever since his dad died when he was 15 years old. And uh, he knows what he's doing. It was one of those things he just kind of looked, he goes, Jason, go to the boneyard. There's an old whatever, cut off the last two feet of the axle there. Rob, just start driving to Klamath Falls to uh, John Deere, they'll have something on the counter for you. And sure enough, I brought back the part, Jason brought back some parts, uh, that evening it was up and running, the gears were a little bit loose so they rubbed a little sand in it and uh, away they went. So uh, I didn't have to do anything that extreme, but sometimes when you're farming, you gotta, and it's time to go, you gotta figure out how to do it. All right, so once again, thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead where Christmas trees are my business. Teaching and cleaning horticulture is my job, and outdoor projects are my passion. Check in again later this year to see how our trees are doing. Thanks for watching. Be blessed.